So what about my work? I'm in the process of writing and illustrating Legend of the Star. It's a story of a young girl named Adora who lives quietly and contentedly um, on a small peaceful planet with two guardians and their son. The story begins when two off-worlders arrive and inform her that she is the only surviving member of the Star family. <coughs> her father died in the battle to overthrow the Emperor. And as men still loyal to the House of Star, they have chosen her to replace her father in the prophecy which foretells the Emperor's demise. <coughs> The sword of star, but once shall slay and end the holy emperor's reign. So, on the surface, it's the story of a cute sword-wielding heroine and her battle um, to defeat evil. As Adora sets out on her quest, she gains a group of friends who help her and introduce, and and we are introduced to the characters that fight against them on the emperor's emperor's side, uh, Lord Janar. Lord Jannar has come to believe that he's a living god, um, that he has like these unique powers and knowledge of the universe. I'm reminded of the quote earlier from the New Age lady. <laughs> um, and he's become obsessed with his mortality because he thinks he's just so important and special that not only um, should his existence be um, the most important thing to like every living cre creature, but that somehow it is like fundamentally necessary um, for him to exist. Like it's a fundamental necessity of the universe that he's just so powerful and special and unique that the universe itself just needs him to exist. Um, so he's willing to do absolutely anything to keep this worldview guy is pretty much like the ultimate new ager I think like it's just like everything the whole he has this whole worldview that's all about himself and he just it doesn't matter you know what kind of evidence is produced to say the opposite it's like no this is the way the universe is <coughs> so the emperor and his band of true believers only concern themselves with what can confirm their deeply held beliefs and they focus their efforts on spreading their worldview and ensuring ignorance of anything else. <coughs> the heroes of the story, however, um, not only value open and honest um, pursuit of knowledge, but it's what gets them over the obstacles placed in front of them. Critical thinking is um, what carries them through the conflicts of the plot um, and Adora isn't afraid to be wrong. Um, in fact, the story shows characters getting into trouble when they lack skepticism um, and rely too heavily on their intuition and personal experience. Adora and her friends are the same type of brave, inspiring, altruistic heroes that we're familiar with in other stories, except these characteristics clearly come from their skeptical nature and reason-based thinking. So that we have, the heroes of the story are portraying values that are often valued in science and in skepticism, um, and using manga to create this sort of, an easier way to create an emotional connection with the audience or reader, which you don't always get when you're watching, you know, like a straight science documentary. <clears throat> also, there's another clear difference between Adora and Janar. Adora loves living, while Emperor Janar simply fears death. And I think that's an important distinction there. Um, because I think you can fear dying and not necessarily have a love or respect for life. And personally, I find that a lot of sort of new agey beliefs and spirituality seem to sell themselves as life-affirming. Um, but I find, I sort of see them more as primarily dis 
satisfied with the realities of living and being human. And the more I learn about science and use its methods of thought in my life, and see others doing the same, um, I see in it like more more honest respect for life. Um, so I'm hoping I can convey these feelings um, through a character like Adora, that I can show her as a person who is accepting of reality, <coughs> um, reality as it is, and that that is an attitude worth having. Um, that you can have that kind of attitude and still feel wonder and joy about the universe. In fact, I think probably more so, personally I believe more so, because it comes from a place of fact-based thinking. So I think hopefully through manga, all this can, all this sort of values and ideas that are in secular humanism and skepticism that they can be sort of packaged in, in this outer layer of manga and um, have this medium that's marketable towards especially young women and a diverse readership and have a way to connect to people emotionally. I think a lot of media um, that advertises spirituality and new age um, sort of beliefs they're very good at that, they're very good at, um, because their sort of product is already sort of hitting people's emotions already, and then they use storytelling, it's just so appealing. And I'd like to do the same thing for science-based thinking, for skepticism, to use characters in storytelling where people have role models for people who think like this that you can tell stories that are emotional and dramatic and a lesson is learned about critical thinking and <laughs> evidence-based thinking and scientific method, all that good stuff. And packaged in this like candy coating <laughs> of cool fights and shiny spaceships and, and handsome young starship captains. Here's our main character. Yes. <laughs>